Creepy means something that causes an unpleasant feeling of fear or unease. For example, a clown's face might be creepy because it's too close to normal, but not quite. Spooky may mean something that is strange and frightening or inspires a feeling of fear. And scary means frightening, causing fear. Now, you're probably saying these all kind of mean the same thing. There's some slight variances between these three. Each one of these music videos that I came across in my childhood gave me all three feelings at once. And I want to kind of share those with you. There are three videos by three, well, two of my favorite artists. There's actually one artist that has two of my favorite music videos. So let's actually discuss it. So let's start with the creepiest video. A video that's endured not only because it's a great song, but also because the unfortunate subject matter has not changed and has only gotten worse over the past 32 years. Jeremy, sung by the legendary group Pearl Jam, was chilling in his depiction of a young teen who, after being bullied relentlessly in school by his classmates, takes a weapon and un unalives himself in front of his whole class. The song's inspired by the tragic tale of Jeremy Wade Dell. There's a beautiful website dedicated to the life of Jeremy Wade Dell, which I will include in the description of this video below. Jeremy's mother, Wanda Dell, described him as a talented young man and a great drummer. Jeremy, the music video is also inspired by Eddie Vedder's own experience, particularly a schoolmate who he had a couple of run-ins in junior high. In a 1991 interview with Karen Bliss, Eddie describes to Karen, I had a very similar experience with a kid who I grew with. I didn't really grow up with. I just had a couple instances with him. And he ended up to be a, you know, kind of a, I mean, he freaked out. His world blew up. He kind of freaked out and brought a weapon into school one day. It was geography class and shot up a 1,000 gallon fish tank or something. That was in junior high, seventh grade. And I had gotten in a fight with this kid like a year earlier. The Jeremy video is hauntingly directed by Mark Pellington. Mark has directed many music videos and movies, including The Mothman Prophecies and Arlington Road. There are so many aspects of this music video that creep me out. But I always remember the creepy shots of Jeremy sitting in class, surrounded by all of his classmates. And there's a semi-360 shot of the entire class frozen in place, pointing, laughing, and jeering at Jeremy. You can see Jeremy looking down or away from them, and I hate this scene. If you have ever been bullied, it feels like you are isolated in a hole or cage and you are there for someone else's amusement. You feel frozen in your fear and anger and shame. Sometimes adults who should have stepped in to stop the harassment either stand aside and let the bullying continue, or in some insidious cases, encourage it. I can't even imagine the level of bullying kids go through now these days with the internet and social media. At least when I was a kid and I wanted to get away from the bullies, all I had to do was just run home. Now bullies follow you not only from school, but they also come into your home via social media. There does not seem to be a safe harbor anywhere. This creepy scene among other creepy scenes is bookended at the end of the music video where Jeremy commits the bloody act and the kids who are in the front row are frozen in horror and covered in Jeremy's blood. When Eddie Vedder sang the lyrics, Jeremy spoke in class today, I finally understood what he meant all of these years later. There's a shot of Eddie Vedder as he sings the lyrics and he eerily looks up at the ceiling or camera and this has always stood out with me. This is why Jeremy is a creepy video because there have been unfortunately countless Jeremy's ever since this video released. The next music video, Runaway Train, is again from the 90s and from a rock group called Soul Asylum. Runaway Train was directed by Tony Kay, who has directed such films as Detachment and American History X. It is believed that this music video saved 21 kids. In a 2022 interview with The Guardian, Director Tony Kay states, 36 kids featured in the U.S. versions. We eventually found 21, he added. I'd argue it was the single most important thing that happened in the history of MTV because it saved people's lives. 11 kids from the U.S. videos are still missing. Four were deceased, so that just leaves 21. The spooky part of the video that always sticks out in my mind are the shots of the kids' faces and their names as they flash across the screen. It automatically connected with me because I knew even back then that those kids were real and that this was not a make-believe video. 
Another part of the video that haunts me is when I see a little black girl running towards the camera. She is running away from something, but I do not see what she's running from. Her face is filled with so much terror and it still shakes me every time I see her. The number of missing young black girls, boys, and indigenous women in this country has skyrocketed since this video was released. Sometimes when I'm on the road and I pull into a gas station, I can see little stickers in the bathroom mirror that say, are you in danger and need help? Here where I live, there's a massive human trafficking corridor. And it seems like this issue of runaway or, or kidnapped children and women has only gotten worse. The last thing about this video that spooks me out and makes me feel sad are the following lyrics of the song, beautifully sung by the lead singer, David Anthony Perner. This is from verse two. Can you help me remember how to smile? Make it somehow all seem worthwhile. How on earth did I get so jaded? Life's mysteries seem so faded. I can go where no one else can go. I know what no one else knows. Here I am, just drowning in the rain with a ticket for a runaway train. I'm so lucky. Unbelievably lucky. My parents used to tell me that when I was in kindergarten, I decided on my own that I wanted to go home by myself. I left my school and walked several miles across the highway just to get home. I was gone for a couple of hours, but this terrified my parents. I crossed a busy roadway heading to a local pizza hut. The police came and found me walking towards the direction of the restaurant and could not believe how far I had crossed on the highway and got without getting killed, hit, or even kidnapped. I only remember walking towards the pizza hut. I don't really remember anything else, how I even got there or the police officer who brought me home. All this to say, I was very lucky, and I'm thankful to whoever or whatever was watching me that day. This is why Soul Asylum's Runaway Train music video is so spooky, spooky to me. The last video, entitled Do the Evolution from Pearl Jam, premiered in, on MTV in 1998. The song is from the band's 1998 studio album, entitled Yield. This video is probably one of my favorite videos of all time, and there are two reasons for this. One. It's co-directed by Kevin Altieri, who directed the Batman the Animated Series, and also Todd McFarlane, the award-winning comic book artist and writer behind Spawn. And two, the lyrics to the song were very unnerving and memorable. The song was written by Stone Gossard and Eddie Vedder. Here's just a sample of the chorus. Admire me. Admire my home. Admire my son. He's my clone. Yeah, 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 yeah. This land is mine. This land is free. I'll do what I want, but irresponsibly. It's evolution, baby. The imagery in this music video of how the earth was formed and how life began to progress through violence, survival, and domination. The imagery is so provocative. Once mankind entered the tournament, we pretty much take over the planet. I love how over the course of the song and the music video, Eddie's vocals start off calm and restrained. And then as the imagery becomes more violent, as mankind progresses through the millenniums, you hear Eddie's voice become more chaotic and wild. I love the bridge portion of the song and music video when Death, or who I assume is Death, dances. And as she dances, you see her smile and strut, but you also see her face flash to a creepy skull. I watched the video once more, and during the world ending explosion, I also noticed there's a very brief image of a face screaming in the explosion. I don't know if it's a man, woman, or child, but I love little subliminal things like this. They always creep me and scare me out and they are, they're always intriguing. This video and its message are still relevant to this day. Man's insatiable need to hold dominion over every person, place, or thing is in essence dooming all of mankind. You can see with all the storms that have been happening, how AI and tech have displaced so many people from their jobs and the state of the world does not feel like progress to me. It feels like we are either at the beginning or the end of things. I encourage you all to look at the video and all the videos that I mentioned thus far. There are tons of videos that are far creepier and scarier than the ones I chose. I felt that these videos were eerie because of how vivid and real the subject matter and the performances in the music videos were. How much of an impact the song and imagery are seared into my memory to this very day. If you like what I had to say or stayed this long, I thank you and please like share and subscribe. Maybe you have some examples of music videos that you're scared of. 
I would like to read about them, so leave a comment and let's discuss it. That's all I got. Have a good one. Cabs out. Thank you.